I'd like to share with you some information about the Leatherwood Art Scope. My father, Jim Leatherwood, developed the art in the late 60s for the United States Army. It was used on the M21 sniper system, which is an accurized M14 with the art scope mounted on top. On this rifle here, you can see the Art 2 mounted on a 338 Remington bolt action that my father and my uncle built in the mid 80s. The Art Scope look is unique as it seems to have a bit of a thicker zoom ring, and that's actually because you have a zoom and a cam ring that are locked into each other, and they also have the telltale signs of these two locking nuts one for the zoom ring and one for the cam ring. Some folks I've spoken with are not familiar with the art scope and they don't have an understanding of its history. So let me give you some reference and context. Out of Nowhere, a history of the military sniper written by Martin Pegler makes reference to the Leatherwood art scope and the M21 system. And he writes, the XM21 was incredible. All you had to do was turn your scope cam ring until your target's picture was dead center. You couldn't miss. At 300 yards, we were putting two out of three bullets into a hole the size of a dime. The weapon was so easy to shoot that it built up a confidence, thinking no target was too far away. In his book, The Long Range War, Sniping in Vietnam, Peter Sinek actually makes a lot of reference and dedicates a lot of this book to the Leatherwood shooting principle of using the cam. I have a letter here from a retired Master Sergeant, Carl Sullivan, United States Army Special Forces, Vietnam veteran, two tours, 69-70 and 71-72. And he says on his first tour, he was assigned as a sniper, uh, an M21 system. And he said, using this was a no-brainer. You lock the target, breathe, breathe, squeeze, one shot, one kill. Now, for those of you who have taken the time to write in, Thank you very much. The family truly appreciates it. To use the art system is very simple. You simply frame, aim, and shoot. You frame 18 inches on your target. Then you put crosshairs point of aim, point of impact. You don't have to worry about holdover. And then you use proper trigger and breathing technique, squeeze off your round and hit the target. That easy. Frame, aim, and shoot. Now let's fast forward and take a look at the M1000. The M1000 was designed by my father shortly before he passed away in 2007. The unique thing about this scope is that the cam can accommodate more than one caliber. So we provide a book, match your caliber, and set your cam. Really, set up on the scope, again, is very simple. You set the cam, reference the book, you go zero, just like you would any other scope, and then you go shoot something. It's that easy. Another unique feature of this scope is the multi-dial system. You can save up to five zeros. So for example, you target shoot with one grain, but you hunt with another grain. You can save the different zeros uh, right here. The other thing you'll need to do is make sure you change your cam setting for the appropriate grain. I've decided to use the M1000 as a fundraiser scope for some youth hunting organizations. I believe that the art scope, the principle of frame, aim, and shoot, will allow mentors and parents to teach younger or inexperienced hunters how to be successful at longer ranges more quickly by eliminating the variable of holdover. As you know, when you fire your bullet, it has what's called a trajectory. So the bullet goes up and then it comes back down. And trying to figure out range and how much to hold over based on where you zeroed and hitting the target, trying to explain all that to a 12 or 13 year old uh, may be a little difficult. You get out into the field and you see that big buck, the heart rate goes up the adrenaline's pumping, and now you're trying to explain, okay, it is at 300 yards away. I need you to hold over one inch or two inches above it. And as you're trying to explain all this, the animal 
may not be cooperating totally and deciding to walk off or who knows what can go wrong, extra movement. And, and so it, it can be a bit difficult. With the M1000, you go to the range, your young shooter learns to frame, aim, and shoot. The sight picture remains the same, reduces variability. So it's consistency of what they're shooting at. It gives you control as a mentor. So for example, let's say you know that that target's at 350 meters or 350 yards away. You can review the cam and make sure that that shooter has got the cam setting right on. And then they just place point of aim, point of impact. Of course, uh, you may have elevation involved. You may have windage involved. There is a mill dot reticle to help with your windage. And if you're dealing with severe elevation, uh, hunting in the mountains, say, the good thing about the cam is that, again, if you're a mentor hunter and you know that there's a, a, an additional holdover, so it's not just the range that you have holdover, now you've got to calculate holdover or hold under depending on if you're above or below your target. Again, if you're familiar with the cam, you can set the cam point of aim, point of impact, or you can at least reduce a variable of the range and then just deal with the elevation. So the, the aspect of eliminating the variable of holdover, being able to teach the young shooter a consistent sight picture will help them become more successful at those slightly longer ranges than what they're normally comfortable with. It can also speed up the process. For example, you don't have to take your eye off the target. Shooter acquires the target, frames the target, and then is able to squeeze the trigger without having to pull away from the scope, then reacquire the target because of, a, of using an additional uh, ranging mechanism. You can then disengage the cam ring from the zoom ring. So here's the cam ring. You can see the distinctive arrow. Here's the zoom ring. So you loosen the zoom ring screw. You can disengage it. And then you can basically decouple the power ring or the zoom ring from the cam ring. And with the cam ring locked down, it is not using the camming system any longer and you simply zoom in and zoom out as you'd like. So you can use it with the camming system, you can use it independent of the camming system, and you can also use it as a mill dot scope. You zoom all the way to 10 power and you are able to use your mill dot capability. So Really, it's three scopes in one. So now that I've told you about the M1000, let's go take a look at it in action. I'll show you Jacob, who never used an M1000 or an art scope at all before coming out to the range. We sent him one, he put it on his M1A, we got him zeroed within a few minutes, and let's see how he did. Hi, I'm Jacob, and today we've been shooting with the R1000 Leatherwood scope. Uh, and uh, as somebody who's just come into contact with the scope and just received it for the first time, the switch to range is at 300 and 500. Uh, and without any other math, any other range finders, anything other than the Leatherwood cam here, uh, we were able to switch targets rapidly and go from uh, zeroing in and targeting at 100 yards to a twist. Next shot, bang on the 300 yards. Twist again, we're right on top of the 500 yard target as well. And these are not only extreme distances, we're talking about five football fields, a third of a mile almost, but being able to switch back and forth in between them without having to uh, calibrate new equipment or use other equipment, no math, no pens, no paper, uh, using nothing but this scope uh, in my M1A. The 300 yard target. Are you ready? Ready? Hit! All right, let's see what goes on at five.
you hit hey, it. There we go. That's right, about 300. You can go bang and you're straight on. No, no messing with anything else. And then we twisted from 300 and went to 500. And once again, all we had to just do is twist that cam until our box is fitting and then bang right on at 500. And those are huh. out there. Yeah. Nice. And we didn't have to use any other equipment or anything else. It was, it was slick.